All right, here's what to do if you have a really big improper fraction and you need to simplify it. And you're sitting there like, oh my gosh, I don't know all of the factors of this really large number. Well, actually, division is here to help you out. Let's say if we have 157 thirds. We're like, oh my gosh, how do I simplify that? Well, even if it's not going to simplify into a nice whole number, you can still simplify and make it into a more simplified mixed number. And how we do that is through division. So when we divide, our numerator is what we're really chopping up. We're, we're saying how many of these third size pieces will make whole numbers, will go into groups of thirds. So if we're breaking up our numerator, it is what's getting divided into groups of three. And then I just treat it like a long division problem, and then the fractions don't come into play until the very end. All right, three times one is three, times two is six, times three is nine, times four is 12, times five is 15. Oh wait, times five. Okay, five groups of three is 15 with no remainder. Three, how many groups of three make up seven? Three, six, nine, oops, went too far. Two, all right, three times two is six with one remainder. Now, in fifth grade, you learned to just write R1. We don't do that in sixth grade. We expect a more rigorous understanding of what that remainder actually is. What you are saying here is that you can make 52 groups of three and it will almost get you to 157 you would have 52 full groups of three, and then you'd have one little piece left over. And that one little piece is one out of the three that it would be required to make a whole. So you have 52 holes and one third of another hole. The one comes from our remainder here, and the three is the same denominator that I was talking about in my original fraction because I'm not changing the size of these pieces, I'm just regrouping some of them into whole numbers. That is a much faster way to simplify than try and come up with factor rainbow of 157, which is not going to be on any multiplication chart that we have and is going to take you a really, really long time. And it's also how we write all of our remainders in fraction form. Because if you write me 52 R1, I'm gonna be like, great, that's wrong. We don't accept any R's because R doesn't show me that you understand what that remainder is actually meaning. This shows me that we know, oh, this remainder means that it didn't quite make a whole group and this is the fraction of the group that it actually did make. Let's try another example. Let's do 38 ninths. Oh gosh, don't sit there coming up with your factor trees for 38 ninths. Just throw it into a division problem. 38 divided by nine. All right, nine goes into 38. 9 times nine, 1 is 9, 9 times 2 is 18, 9 times 3 is 27, 9 times 4 is 36. Ooh, that's pretty close. All right, let's try that. Four holes with two remaining. So we have four whole groups of 9 ninths, and then we have a group that is 2 ninths. Let's draw a picture of that. All right, here's my picture. In each of these rows, there are nine dots. One group of nine, two groups of nine, three groups of nine, four groups of nine, and two left over. That's what our problem up here says. Four groups of nine with two left over. So what fraction would that be? Well, it's two out of the nine possible things that should have been in this box. So this is four holes and two out of the nine that should have been there. And that is a picture to prove that your division problem is true. 
So when you have a fraction, an improper fraction that you don't really know how to simplify and you can't pick out hmm, what would those factors be, just do some long division or draw yourself a picture or if you are comfortable with exploding dots, use that. And then your remainder is a fraction with the same denominator as your original improper fraction. So your whole answer should be a mixed number.